to the um, question I set you on the last set of notes. So the red wave here, when you add it to the blue one, the displacements of each, you get the green line there. So if this was water waves, you would only see the green one as a result of these two waves interfering. Here's a demonstration of it. It's not the best animation. There's better ones on the wiki server. Um, but as you go across, you can see there's actually a point where both the waves actually cancel out and um, leave nothing behind. This is a um, pulse. There's no, uh, there's no crest and trough of each wave. Cancellation does not destroy the waves. Energy is still present as kinetic energy. The wave can still be reformed. So the energy still has to be there. You don't, it doesn't disappear as sound or heat. Um, it's still going to be there and it's there in the form of kinetic energy. Both particles are wanting to move, or are moving, but they're moving in opposite directions. So uh, the actual particle at the time is stationary, but um, it is actually still in motion. Superposition creates stationary waves and interference patterns. Stationary waves. When two waves of the same frequency and amplitude traveling in opposite directions meet, they interfere to produce stationary waves. Okay, so here, um, important concept is uh, we're always looking at a couple of waves here, okay? So we might be setting waves up on a string, but there is actually two waves, one going down it and one coming uh, back from a reflection. Uh, there must be the same frequency and amplitude to get proper standing waves, okay? You may be able to do some uh, different ones of different amplitudes, but they must be the same frequency. They travel in opposite directions, so to set that up, normally what we do is do some sort of reflection. Now when they meet, uh, they're just, uh, they have to be on the same sort of like line, they have to be going towards each other. This is a demonstration of a, so this is a standing wave here. So it's created from um, one wave going this way, okay, one wave going that way, and then there's a reflection going this way, and that reflection then interferes with the one going this way. And what you do then is you get a standing wave where um, there's some big oscillation oscillations and they don't change position and there's a, some positions where there's no oscillation at all. So there's no none there, none there, and none there over time. So this is a um, much better way of showing it, is showing it in bits. Okay, so all we have here is, let's say we look at um, this point of the green wave and uh, this point of the blue wave. So when we add that part of the green wave to that part of the blue wave, we get nothing at that point. This part of the blue to that part of the green, we get nothing. So in the future, the green has traveled in a bit. So if we're trying to find that same wave, it's around about here for both the green and the blue. So if we add that height uh, plus that height again, okay, so it's there twice, okay, we then get this height here. Now, in the future again, well, we've actually traveled past this time, so the green one's now over there, blue one's over there. Uh, if you add this height, sorry, um, if this, you add this one to this one, uh, you then get the height all the way up there. Okay, so there's a bit more of an increase. And then this one here, we've traveled further again, so we're almost over here like that for the green, and then here for the blue. Um, if I add this point to that point, I then go up to here. Okay, so at all times you can see that this crest is getting larger and larger of the red wave. Okay, so it's getting amplified by these two here. But you can also see that there is a point on the wave there, 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 and there that is always zero. There's no change in displacement, no matter what position these green and blue waves are. This red wave here in the future will end up um, up here. Okay. So, now the positions where there's no displacement at all up here, there's no change of displacement over time, we call those the nodes. So, along this line here, there's no change in displacement over time. And same for this line here. Now, along this line here, there is the greatest change of amplitude. 
Okay, and so that's called the antinode. Okay, so along that line there is the greatest change of amplitude. Um, so that's the antinodal lines. Now, a stationary wave consists of a series of nodes and antinodes. Node, amplitude is always zero. Antinode, amplitude is always maximum. So here's a diagram of it in motion. Okay, so a green and red wave are traveling across. The only wave you're going to see is the blue one, which is the result of the two. Okay, so you do the superposition, the mathematics at each point, you'll get the blue wave. Now you can see here at the green lines, the wave shows maximum displacement, while on these black lines, there's no displacement at all. Now, if we put this onto a string, so a stationary wave on a string, if a string is stretched between two fixed points and excited, then a stationary wave is set up in the string. Each end will always be a node. Always draw the diagrams when you do this, showing the extremes of amplitude. Otherwise, it's just going to look like a progressive wave that we did last topic. So the energy is stored rather than transmitted as in progressive waves. So stationary waves, it looks stationary, so the energy looks like it's staying in the same place too. In class, we did an experiment where we had an oscillator and it made a string move up and down. And what the string did is it then uh, it created some standing waves, so some curves. Okay, so this will be the fundamental. Okay, and it will be oscillating at this maximum oscillation there. Okay, no oscillation at each end. Okay, and that's what it's going to look like. So this is the antinode in the middle there and the node is at each end. Now, if you noticed in class, it wasn't actually just that one that we saw. You could actually set up many others, okay, where um, there are more than just two nodes, okay. So in this case, you could have three nodes, uh, one there, one there, and one there. But you can see how I drew this. I drew the maximum oscillation at each point. If I had it just done this, if I had just drawn the wave like this, well, I wouldn't know the difference between this wave and a, and a just normal progressive wave. So here's a man lying on the floor, okay? Uh, he is moving a spring back and forth, okay? You can see this is the fundamental frequency, which we'll call F, okay? And then if you double the frequency of F, you then get this one here, okay? Where there is a node in the middle, and a node at each end. Now what the man's actually doing is he's moving the spring back and forth and there's a wave going down the spring, hitting the end and coming back again. So the reflection is interfering with, this, with the wave that he's continuing to make. To get this one here you need three times the three frequency and this one the four times the original frequency. You can see how many antinodes and nodes there are in that one. So here's a description of it. So when we draw the standing wave, we draw the extremes of amplitude. So we draw that one and then this line here. Okay, so not just um, one wave. Okay, and you can see in this one there's three nodes and then there's two antinodes. Okay. Just like in that one there. Okay, so what we have here is the fundamental frequency of the string um, vibrates to a certain frequency and then so on. As you go down, if we double the frequency, you get that one. And then if you want three, three times, four times, five times, six times. If you want to think about how this comes about, well, we need to think about how it applies to a wavelength. Now, if we have a look at this wave here and we just follow one of the extremes of amplitude, so this one here, that's what the wave could be like at that moment. So imagine we use a strobe or a photo, you could actually pick it up with the string looking like that. But if you actually look at it, well this point and that point are doing the same thing, so this must be equal to a wavelength. Okay, so that's a wavelength. Now the distance between two nodes from there to there is half a wavelength. Okay, so the distance between two adjacent nodes or range nodes is half a wavelength. Now let's say we had this thing here. We've got a standing wave set up between two walls. What we have here is we've carried on to show you what where the wavelength actually is. Now 
This means that length is equal to half the wavelength. So the length between the two walls is equal to half the wavelength. Let's use this formula here. V equals F lambda. Now, if we actually looked at this picture here, lambda is actually equal to 2L. So let's just put that in. So F 2L. Let's solve for F. Let's make it F equals um, V over 2 lambda. Okay. So what we have there is a formula for the frequency of this thing to get this picture, so to get the uh, string vibrating like this, you need to put in um, the uh, uh, values for this formula here to give you a certain frequency. So, um, so frequency to get this set up, you need to have know the velocity of the wave and also the length of the string. So let's look at this one here. This time length equals wavelength. So in this case, frequency is going to be equal to V over L. Okay, this one here. Well, this time, length is from there to there. The wavelength is going to be two-thirds of the length. Okay, so um, one wavelength is going to be equal to two-thirds of the length. So one wavelength is equal to two-thirds of the length. So if we're going to put that into the formula, well, frequency then is equal to 3V over 2L. Okay, and the last one here, well, it's now half. So the wavelength for this one uh, is equal to half the length. So 1 over 2L. Okay, and so if we want to put that into frequency, well, it's twice the velocity divided by the length. Now, let's say we want to keep a um, common denominator here. So at the moment we've got 2L on the bottom line there. So let's make this one 2L. So it's going to be 2V over 2L. We've got 2L on the bottom line there. And let's make this one 4. Shall I make that a different colour? Let's make that one 4. V over 2L. Well, you can see that as we go from here, we have 1 over 2, 2 over 2, 3 over 2, 4 over 2. We're going up in multiples. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4 times the frequency to get this one here. Okay, so that's what we sort of saw before with that man sitting down on the ground. Mm -hmm.